Hi, I'm Kent. Let's go ahead and make a two-part plaster mold for slip casting. This video is part of a series where I've been doing a deep dive around making plaster molds for slip casting. The past couple of videos we've been making one-part molds, however that limits our shapes. The first video we made a mold of this form to make a pot. In particular it made this one here, this one's bone dry at this point. And we chose this form for a couple of reasons. One, it's readily available, this is just a food container. It also has some properties that make it nice for making molds of. One, it's very thin plastic so it can deform so we can get it out easily. The other one is that it has nice draft angles. This form tapers down towards the bottom, which means we can get it out of the plaster, and likewise we can get the slip casting pot out relatively easily. After making this mold, I pointed out a couple of problems, and we went and made our second one-piece mold. So in the last video, we made a mold around this form here. So this is actually a plastic planter. It also has a nice draft angle. What we did is we added some foam to the top to make a slip well, and then we wind up casting it upside down to manage bubbles. That creates a slip cast pot like this one here. That's great, so now we know how to make copies of existing forms, but only if they're the right shape. And particularly, they need to be tapered like both of these are. They need to be smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top. What if we wanna make a copy of something like this? So this here actually bulges out towards the middle and is narrower at the top and bottom. Well, that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna make a two-part mold. That will let us make a copy of this form. So let's do some drawing and show what's going on here. So imagine this form here. We have a form that is something like that, and that's the top. And the idea is that we wanna be able to pull both the plastic and the slip casting form out. So we wanna create plaster that goes around the edge, something like that. So this here all gets filled in with plaster. So we can then pour the slip in, let the pot form, and then pull it out. So that's how we did the first video. In the second video, we did this upside down. We slip cast the pot upside down and we added the slip well up here. We poured the plaster in from this side, let it set so all the bubbles that they formed would race the, this surface here and stay away from our pot. We can then turn the mold right side back up and slip cast it. Again, this is important because we need to pull from this direction here. So let's think about this form here. So the shape's uh, vaguely like this. It's not quite the same, but the point is it's narrower at the bottom and narrower at the top. So if we add our slip well to the top and then our plaster, around the outside edge. We could again pour this upside down, let the bubbles accumulate on this surface, and then flip it back over. But now there's no way to get the form outside of this mold. Because there is an overhang here, there is no way to pull it from that direction. And even if we put the, the hole on the bottom, we'd run into the same problem. There'd be no way to pull it from that direction. So we're stuck. If we make a mold like that, we have just entombed our form and we have no way to slip cast pots. That's not what we're going for. So how can we fix this problem? Well, we can basically do one of two things. Both of them involve splitting the mold. So one is we can split the mold in half this direction. So basically, if we drew a line down the center and we slip cast it, we'd only be considering half of the pot at a time. So now we can cover up this half. So we're gonna pour the plaster from this side and somehow we need to create a mold for the plaster. So we need some sort of shape along the outside here to catch the plaster. And then we put our pot on the inside and now we can pull the pot out this direction. You can barely see this on camera, but there's a seam line right here and there's one on the opposite side. So when this was molded, it was actually done like this. So the molds came in from the side and released from the sides. So that's one option. The problem is we can't actually do that because of the bottom. It's hard to see on the see-through part, but this is actually concave right here, it dips in. So this drawing isn't actually accurate. What we really have is a curve around the outside and then a dip like this. 
and then a curve around this way. So if we cut it in half, we wouldn't be able to pull it this way. We couldn't pull it this way because we have plaster right here. So that would prevent it from being able to pull the form out that way. So I'm not sure exactly how they formed this. It may have actually been a three-piece mold. So what they may have done is done it laterally, and then they may have another cut here, here, to deal with the bottom. So this bottom mold could go this way, this mold could go that way, and this mold could go that way, separating from the pot. However, do we really need a three-piece mold? I don't think so. We have another option. So again, we have our pot shape. This time we'll draw the little foot area on the top. We're getting farther and farther away from the actual shape, but again, the overall four matters. What we can do is find the area where it bulges out the most. So that would be here. And we can actually cut the mold at that point. So we create a mold for the bottom half. We can kind of ignore the top. We can separate the mold and pull what's inside out this direction. And likewise, we can make a mold for the top half. And if we ignore the bottom, we can then pull this top piece out that way. So basically what that looks like is we cut a line here, we have a mold for the bottom that goes that way, and we have a mold for the top that goes that way. The problem is our slip well kind of gets in the way. If the slip well is flared out like we've been doing, that would actually create an undercut, this part here. This part here would be an undercut. However, we can trim the pot off here. This isn't actually part of the pot, it's just part of the slip casting process. So we can do a cut there and remove the slip. All right, that was a whole bunch of explanation. Let me show you how that's actually gonna work in practice. So here's another one of those cups, and I went ahead and I marked the part that is most sticking out. I used a square to do that, so basically put this on the surface and used a square to find that area. The problem is if we're off a little bit to one side or the other, we will create an undercut, and this can go poorly. So we need to try and nail that middle area as well as possible. And then just like my last video, I went ahead and took some foam and cut it out this will be our slip well. So we need to attach it to the top of the pot like this. So just like before, we want to slip cast this upside down. So we will build a structure with our coddle boards around the outside edge, only we're not going to fill it all the way up with plaster. What we're going to do is fill it up all the way to that line that I found, that place where it bulges out the most, and then stop there, let the plaster cure. We will then put on mold release so the plaster doesn't stick to itself, and then fill it up the rest of the way. That will let us split the mold in half like I was talking about. And the problem with doing this is the way we're pouring the plaster the bubbles could potentially catch on this underside here, so that surface may not be as good. Only the top is gonna to have the bubbles rise out. An alternative would be to build this up with something to our magic line, like sculpting clay, pour the plaster on top, let it cure, flip it all over, remove the sculpting clay, and then fill in that part with plaster. That's the right way to do it, but that's more work than I'm gonna put into it right now. All right, let's go ahead and start assembling everything. I pulled out my old board so I can get plaster on that. This time I'm going to build it on top of a piece of this pink foam. I need to attach the slip reservoir to the top of my form here. Last time I used silicone. I don't feel like waiting, so this time I'm gonna use some CA glue. Just gonna tack it down first. Obviously CA glue is not reversible, so it's gonna screw up this plastic cup, but I'm okay with that. This is just a cheap plastic cup. So the other thing we need to do is build our cottle board structure and get it to be about the right size. I will then take my form out and use some foil tape to seal everything up. I don't think I'm gonna use silicone this time. The pore isn't that big. I will then CA glue this form down on the inside once I've got all that in place. So set that off to the side. That looks like when you make it a little bit bigger. I think I have the cuddle boards all situated. So this will fit in here well. There's a little bit of space on all the sides. I did not silicone everything down this time. I'm gonna use this foil tape to seal all the seams. I'm gonna seal between the edge of the cuddle board and the foam on the bottom and in the corners of the cuddle board as well. That way plaster won't leak out. And I'm doing this before I put in the form because otherwise my hand won't fit very well. Okay, I've got that all taped up. So it should not leak, fingers crossed. On here, very faintly, I have the line where I marked the level that I need to do the first pour to. Try and draw it around here some more. I 
All right, that should be the split where we're gonna do this pour first and then this pour second so it can come apart. And this is really just so it doesn't float. All right, that's all secured down. I'm gonna let that kick. Once it does, I'm gonna go ahead and get some mold soap down in there so we can get the form to release. So I think that means we're ready to go ahead and start mixing plaster. So I did some math based upon the area and then I did some displacement to figure out how much this form's taking up. And I came up with two liters for the bottom half that I wanna fill. And it's basically two liters for the top as well. So with two liters of space to fill, that means I need two kilograms of dry plaster. And then I need 0.7 of that of water. So two times 0.7 is 1.4 liters of water. So that's what I have measured out here. I'm going to take the dry and put it onto the wet, let it slake for three and a half minutes. I will then mix it for four minutes, and then we'll put it in and make sure not to get past the line. All mixed up, now I'm going to pour it into the corner and try and make sure I don't overshoot my line. And watch for spills, just in case. Oops. Sure, not any leaks. So far, so good. All right, perfect. I got just to my line. I'm going to go ahead and let this set up. It has been about an hour since we did the pour, and the plaster has started to cool down. So now we're going to get ready for the next pour. So I got a little bit of plaster here that attached, so I'll just chip that off. I'm going to put some keys in here so that we can align this. Even though the form itself is rotationally symmetric, I'm sure the plaster will not be. So I just got a metal tool here with a curve on it. I'm going to just dig in here. All right, let's put three keys in the corner. I didn't do the fourth, so I can't accidentally put it wrong. The other way to do this is to disassemble the cotta board so you can have better access, but putting this together was a bit of a pain, so I'm trying to not do that. Now we need to pour plaster on top of this plaster, and unfortunately, plaster really likes to stick to itself, so we need to use lots of mold release agent. I really want to saturate the plaster. So I'll put a bunch of paper towel here and really put it on. Get our registration areas. All right, let that soak in for a second and we'll do a couple more coats. So the idea is to create a barrier so the plaster can't stick. Now we're gonna mix up the plaster and pour the second half. And just like before, we'll put the dry onto the wet. And then same thing. And I wanna go about an inch or so above the top of my form here. This plaster definitely had more bubbles in it. Mixing smaller volumes is harder because it's more likely to suck the air in as you mix. All right, same drill. I'm gonna go ahead and let this set and then we will start the demolding process. There's the clamps. Let's pull off the cotton boards. See how hard the tape is holding on. Too many leaks. This is just where I spilled. I right, got the foam off. The CA glue held. All right, let's see if this will come apart. Oh. Got it. Perfect, that side came out. Let's see if I can pull out the cup. I think I'm just gonna dig out the foam. This side. 
All right, so we got the bottom piece off. The top is kind of stuck. I think what's happened is the CA glue has formed a lip over the top of the plaster. So if you look closely here, there's still some foam stuck there, and I think that's CA glue that's gone over the plaster. All right, I finally got it out, and indeed, there was definitely a bit of a lip formed by the CA glue. So that's why I had a hard time getting it out. So I wind up with an undercut. Undercuts are not good. I went ahead and scraped off the edges. The other thing I noticed is that we've caught a bubble right there. So that's definitely gonna get bigger over time. All right, there we go. So there's the registration marks. So this will fit just like that. And then we can pour slip in there, trim the top off, and then pull the mold apart. Let's go ahead and let this dry all the way out and try slip casting a pot. All right, our mold is dry and it does look pretty good. I went ahead and sponged it off so there's no plaster anywhere. So since I only have three keys in here, I can't get this wrong. It only goes one way. I got a bunch of rubber bands here. I'm gonna go ahead and seal it up just to make sure. Give it the best chance possible so it doesn't leak. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's definitely gonna be a parting line. But that's just one of the trade-offs we make with multi-part molds. In order to slip cast these more complex shapes, we need the multi-part mold and the multi-part mold has seams. I've got a fresh batch of slip here all ready to go. So we're gonna pour it up and pour it up into the slip well. There we go. So far, no leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for about half an hour. If I really wanna dial in the wall thickness, I'll need to slip cast multiple times to figure out what actually works, but that should be good enough for this first pot. Looks like our slip well is working and I don't see any leaks around the outside, so our mold held together. Let's go ahead and dump out the slip. Just gonna put it back into my container here. Here's the inside of our pot. I'm gonna let this drain for a while on my slip table and then we'll come back and demold it. Our pot has formed and I can see it pulling away from the plaster right here. So it's starting to shrink and dry. Let's go ahead and pull it out. So just trim around the slip well here, just like we did with the one piece mold. Normally I trim flush against the slip well, but this one I'm gonna trim around the inside. Since we had a little bit of chip out that I cleaned up in this top piece, I don't wanna get it stuck. I'm just gonna go around with my needle tool here. Take the rubber bands off. Now we should be able to just pop it apart. There we go, out of the bottom. Let's see if we can pull it out of the top. Oh yeah, perfect. There we go. So we successfully made a copy of our cup here. Obviously this is gonna shrink. So we're gonna have a smaller cup, but I think it'll work. And you can see our flash around the edge here. So this is where the molds joined and had a little bit of chip out, but it didn't get stuck. So that's a very good sign. And now we have another tool in our tool belt. Instead of just making pots that taper down with a draft angle, we can actually have nice complex curves. At this point, you can treat it like any other pot. I'm gonna go ahead and let this get leather hard. I can then clean up the seam lines and clean up the rim. And now I have another mold so I can make more pots. So in the past few videos, I've been making copies of existing forms. And while it is a copy, as I just mentioned, they shrink. So how can we overcome that? We've also been modifying our forms to add the slip well. In the next video, we're gonna jump into 3D printing so that we can overcome both of those challenges. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know, thanks.